Hey everyone, this is Haley from Cartoon Universe, and today I am back with another Secrets and Analysis video for Star vs. Force of Evil. This episode is Raid the Cave, and as you probably know, we are going to be having a bunch of star episodes over the whole month of February, pretty much almost every weekday. Um, so this was the first one, and today I am here with my friend Kitsune Zakuro instead of uh, Michael because he's not feeling well, but pretty soon he'll be back, I'm sure, to do these Secrets and Analysis videos with me. Uh, let's uh, hope he gets better soon. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a bit awkward, I'd yeah. say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's her first time doing it, so uh, <laughs> give her some flack. Forgive me. Yes. yes. So basically, this episode was about Star trying to get Glossrick and the Book of Magic back from Ludo. Because if you remember in Bon Bon the Birthday Clown, um, he got taken away, um, as well as the book. Um, and, you know, that was very sad for Star because that was you know, something that her family has owned for forever, and, you know, it was, you know, connected her to her magic and stuff, taught her stuff, and so did Glossaric, and now that's all gone, and, you know, it's, she was left in a pretty bad state at the end of the episode. Not to mention, like, everything that happened then, she mm -hmm. was just kind of ruined, it's like, and then that happened, it was, like, even worse for her. Mm -hmm, yeah. If she was maybe in, like, a better mental state, she would have handled it more rationally, but, I mean... Yeah, speaking of which, uh, you know, with Marco and, you know, how she is with him, uh, his relationship with Jackie is kind of, it's barely touched upon in this episode, and it's, you know, it's just kind of mentioned for a second, but, um, you know, at least it's not like they just dropped that, which obviously is not the case looking at uh, episode uh, descriptions for the future. <laughs> Um, I like how they're not really, like, shoving it in your face, but at the same time, yeah, it's just kind of like, it's there. It's it's nice for all the Jarko shippers, but I'm <laughs> sure for everyone else who's like Starko, it's like soul crushing. Yes, oh, I feel them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so of course we see that Star is really taking this very seriously, and she's trying to like pack a whole bunch of stuff to you know uh, go find Ludo in his cave. I guess where I guess she knows where he's supposed to be, or no, they go to Buff Frog later, who tells them where he is or was supposed to be. But she packs like really strange things like. A vintage uh, laptop which is also known as a typewriter so of course uh, we see that star does not want to talk to her mother about this because you know obviously her mother would probably not be pleased to learn that she lost the book of magic and glossaric but you know of course later in the episode uh, star is finally able to do so but at this time she's like I am NOT doing that <laughs> typical you know teenager thing yeah so like I mentioned before we get to see buff frog and his uh, children once again and you know I, I kind of really like seeing how this character is changing and stuff and how he's become a father and it's it's just so cute the babies they have little legs and it's very nice to see yeah. uh, i like how buff frog isn't just like uh like he is a side character but he's sort of like their backup plan he's 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 like a reliable source for things now mm -hmm. yeah exactly it's just uh, it's it's so great yeah it's, uh, he's such a great character now from being like this comedic relief sort of goofy sort of side character uh, cliche thing, you know, the dumb uh, henchman, mm -hmm. and now he's he's just this wonderful father. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of that, he is telling them or reading to them a fairy tale, which is it's kind of funny because it's like a reversal of what probably happened when the Mumins banished the monsters from their lands, and it's just like a reversal of what happened there. Um, I just uh, do you think the monsters have Professions, since someone had to write this mu book, and I doubt the humans would have written this book. I mean, yeah, like the humans writing a book about monsters winning. Yeah, that'd be weird. Really, <laughs> that would not make sense. I guess. No. I I guess that I mean it doesn't seem too organized. Like all the monsters don't really seem too organized in terms of no. everything, to my knowledge. Um, um but I mean we uh, see monsters like Toffee who are totally like professional yeah. and stuff. Yeah, but um, a lot of them seem literate and like they don't seem to have like uh, they they don't seem to be in a situation where they're given resources to study and mm -hmm. do all that fancy stuff like some humans and you know they just seem to kind of sit around in caves. Yeah, so that's an interesting question. How that book came to be, which probably won't ever be answered, but I mean, <laughs> it's a nice story. the mystery of the fairy tale. Yes, exactly. So Star and Marco, um, you know, they c they come to him so they can learn about where Ludo's lair is, 
and they learn that it has a secret entrance, which, as in an earlier episode, I can't remember the name exactly, Buff Frog went into, uh, or found the secret entrance um, in the castle. So, uh, something interesting, um, a little reference to Monty Python and the Holy Grail, is when the um, Star Marco are getting to the cave, and then there's this guard that's looking at them from a distance, and then it's kind of hard to explain in words what happens, but it's just, it's pretty funny, but um, just know that it's a reference that's pretty cool. Like, basically, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but basically, like, all of, you just keep seeing them from the distance, and it's just going back and forth between the, the guard and a Star and Marco, and then all of a sudden they just come up and attack, and the, the guards are like, oh, whatever. <laughs> like supposed to be like this epic run in how heroes like mm -hmm. usually do and it's like they're galloping on the horse and they're just gonna come in and smash stuff but it takes time to get from one end to another so it's just kind of cutting in between and it's sort of that awkward humor where it's like um isn't the thing supposed to happen now but it, it just doesn't yeah. happen and then unexpectedly happens and you're like hey yeah exactly um so when they do finally raid the cave uh we get to see a lot of you know moves from magic and like you know, just physical attacking moves from Marco and Star. Uh, it's interesting to see how serious Star is, and she almost gets kind of vicious when, you know, she is so determined to get the book back um, from Ludo. But um, they find out that these monsters in the cave do not want to fight. Uh, they call themselves al alternative monsters, which is pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, they, just, they just actually moved into this place because it was abandoned. Um, so, you know, they're, they obviously star and Marco went to the wrong place, but she still I mean, does not want to call her mom for help. I mean, technically it's not the wrong place. It, it was just misinformation. Oh well, yeah, you're right. It's okay. right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, instead of like trying to, you know, get help, uh, from her mom or something, she would just rather use a spine s spell, which we saw in Bon Bon, the birthday clown, and she uses it again this time. Um, and it's funny how she, like, starts spying on things she doesn't exactly want to see. I don't know if maybe that's, like, uh, like, she's not, she's not very focused. Like, the last time when it came to spying on Marco and Jackie, she was, like, super focused on them. And so she was able to just immediately see them. Um, but this time she sees, like, like Marco's parents and, uh, Tom and, like, a bunch of other characters before she, uh, finally sees, um, Glossrick and the Book of Magic. Uh, Star is slowly turning to Sith Lord, going to the dark side. <laughs> wow. It's sad, but you know, it, it happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Just hope he doesn't end up like Anakin and yes. Padme, where one of them dies. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, a theory is that she is going to, you know, darker, like, she'll, she won't hesitate as much to use dark magic, and, you know, that could lead her down a very bad path <laughs> eventually. So, Anakin Skywalker. Yes. <laughs> like that's Star Wars reference. <laughs> <laughs> I got him. Mm -hmm. um, so eventually, she does manage to spy on Glossaric, and he seems to be doing just fine. Um, you know, he's being fed and stuff with what he likes. Um, and it turns out he is in an, a different place. Um, and Star does something which is pretty interesting. By she tries to reach into the spell and try to grab Glossaric. And she's actually able to do so by dipping down, um, which is, you know, we've seen that in a couple episodes, or at least one other episode uh, at the beginning of season two, uh, where she's able to, you know, dip down and do magic that she couldn't have normally. And by doing so this time, she was able to reach her hand through the spell to, um, you know, be where Glossrick is, which is pretty incredible. <laughs> But he's not really. Yeah. He's not really. <laughs> he's not, he's not feeling it. Nope. He was like, oh, uh, this has never happened before. Um, he says that's a star, but he doesn't want to be helped, or he doesn't, you know, he sees that, thinks that he, or he just mentions that he kind of belongs he to Ludo. He doesn't look that excited. Yeah. Like, he's not too thrilled. Like, usually you'd be, like, pretty thrilled. Like, when she did that, it kind of reminded me of uh, when, like, and goes into the avatar state because you know like his tattoos and stuff glow and his eyes and all that wooshy weird avatar <laughs> things <laughs> but like you would expect glosser to be like oh good job star like progress and stuff that's that's really good uh, i'm glad you're here to save me but he's just he's i don't know he he's uh he just kind of mean <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. 
I mean, I guess it is kind of. I mean, from what we've seen him in the past, it's not the weirdest thing to ever. But, you know, you thought he was on Star's side, kind of. So it's yeah. like, dude, <laughs> why are you being like, why are you like this? about like? I mean, like, you could, yeah, like, bring in the argument, it's just his teaching method, but, like, like, there's a teaching method, and then they're just being a bit mean. I don't know, that's just, ah, just a bit too mean. Like, give Star a break. She's trying. She did her best. She did something incredible. Give her a break. Like, kind of some slack. Yeah. Like, I did have a feeling that he would be loyal to whoever has the book, um, and it kind of seems like it was right, but, I mean, I, it looks like he still has his own free will. He's just telling, he, I think he's trying to tell Star that she should not take the easy way out of this. Uh, which, you know, I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> rescue you, well, but nah, you gotta, you gotta. I know, but is this <laughs> technically the easy way? Because she had to dip down to do this stuff. Like, th what does he mean by, like, the hard way? Like, yeah. <laughs> she still has to go and use magic to try and get to where he is. But the hard, like, the hard way is with not magic, I guess. Earth Girl style. Yeah. So, what does he, what I does he mean by that? I, his teaching methods are still a mystery to me, and um, after this episode, he kind of seems like a jerk, so... Yeah. I used to like him. Like, a lot. Yeah. He was a fun character. He is very interesting. Um, yeah. yeah, we'll definitely see more of him as future episode descriptions uh, reveal. <laughs> so, later, Star and Marco learn that because, um, or learn that after all this happens, she, you know, uh, going back, actually, uh, the spell breaks and then after that you know they're not they're not sure what to do and marco and star learn that star is actually popular because she is a rebel princess which is kind of alluding to the fact that maybe one day she'll be the one to unite the monsters and the humans which you know is good to see that um you know referencing that i guess shadowing yes or shadowing so after all of this star is finally ready ready to call her mother and tell her about everything and the reactions of her parents are pretty interesting actually they're not really mad or terrified as she thought um they might be they just kind of told her to sit tight so uh they probably know more than they want her to believe um we just don't know what it is yet I, their reactions are really strange <laughs> it it, it kind of almost comes off like just thinking about it like they kind of expected this like, the reactions aren't like, oh my gosh, what's happened? Okay, try and keep calm. It was sort of like, oh, it's happening, or it's happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. We'll have to see what, what, what they do. If, if we actually get to see them, like, in action and do more stuff, that'd be really cool. Because we, we have yeah, seen be... Queen Moon a bit, um, like, yeah. like, actually, like, get stuff done. But then, like, both of them, we haven't really seen both of them together, I think, do anything. No, like we yeah we've seen them do separate stuff like fighting and she's a uh, queen the queen's pretty uh, diplomatic and stuff and the king's you know rowdy and all fighty and masculinity and you know king stuff. <laughs> yep, king stuff but yeah but like together as like a, a a team or something we haven't seen them do anything just kind of sit around mm -hmm. yeah so i mean of course she doesn't listen to her parents because, you know, she's the rebel princess. And she decides to make her own book of spells. Which is really cool that we can see that now that the wand can kind of turn into a pen. Um, you know, that's a really cool way to end up the episode. She just starts making her own uh, spell book. Because, you know, she lost her other one. And, you know, she's starting small with the narwhal blast. But I wonder, you know, how many spells she's really mastered that she can put them in there. I wonder if she's going to put, like, her, like, spells, like, the Narwhal Blast, because I'm pretty sure that's not in, like, the Book of Magic thing. Like, I wonder if she'll also put in, uh, like, the spell, uh, the spying spell, and, uh, maybe some of the darker stuff, or will she just, like, be doing original .png trademark <laughs> work? I don't know, that's a good question, um, because, like, I mean, like I said, who knows, that might be the only dark spell she knows, but, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'd be surprised if she can fill the whole book with stuff, that'd be... That showed that she was really, um, you know, grown as a princess with all her spells that she knows how to do. Yeah, that's, that's actually really cool that she's, like, very determined still, despite her parents' words, to get Glossary back and <laughs> you know, try yeah, to... Yeah, it's, uh, it's good to see that she's uh, becoming serious, but still keeping that sort of charm that she has with her um, upbeat personality and just sunshines and rainbows. 
Mm -hmm. Yep. So that was pretty much it for this episode. Did you have anything else you wanted to say? Um, no, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Okay, cool. So tomorrow's episode is Trickstar, where it, um, the description says, Star seeks to make Magician for Hire Preston Changeo's true command of magic known to the public. So I'm not really sure what to think about that one. <laughs> I wonder if we'll start getting more of a... Um, like, not too plot intense uh, episodes, um, like, until the very end of the season now, or close to the end, because, like, this is kind of like a good, like, stopping point, kind of, like, after um, Bon Bon the Birthday Clown, and this episode is kind of like, I feel like it could possibly mellow down a bit. Um, yeah, the tensions are kind of high. Need to loosen it up a bit with more fun episodes, dare I say, filler. <laughs> is this not serious? You can say that. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay, okay. I won't, I I won't get my head chopped off. You never know. I'll have to see the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that is possible that we could very well be seeing some, you know, less serious stuff. Uh, but then, you know, definitely by the end of the month, with especially with the last three episodes, those look pretty intense, if you ask me. Um, yeah. I, think, I think it would be a good move to uh, do a fun episode. I think they'll hint things, um, maybe for some, some foreshadowing in like, some really dumb way, like uh, how Steven Universe does with uh, Ronaldo, maybe, mm -hmm. and they'll do some weird foreshadowing. Ooh, that'd be awesome. Um, judging by this, uh, the summary, of the, like the description of the episode, it kind of sounds like uh, one of those episodes where it's like, there's this magic user, and then there's this magician that does like card tricks and stuff, and everyone's amazed by the card trick guy. But the person that does the actual magic, they're like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then the magic person is like, that's that's blasphemy! Right? <laughs> um, <laughs> kind of sounds like one of those episodes. Yeah, so we'll have to see tomorrow exactly what that is. So, yeah, we, this is also It's pretty pretty cool that we don't have to wait a whole week. Um, but, you know, at the same time, we're going to be seeing all of se the rest of the season in this month. So. Star bomb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, thank you, Nat, for joining me, um, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye-bye! <laughs>